this shit if you ain't ready to get hit. Well, allow me to drop some knowledge. There we are. Hey. Beauty. What's up? Nice shirt, by the way. What a great uh, start to this already. Thank you. That, that's a little homage to you. Yeah, you do love it. it to me <laughs> I love How it. How you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. A little smoked out. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's up, everybody? Thanks for being here today. Um. You already know it's your favorite Jedi, BMF goddess. I'm joined tonight, and I have the honor of being joined tonight by the vivacious, vicious Vicky, pro wrestler. Um, thank you for being here, Vicky. Of course, of course, no problem. Um, I know that you're like super, super busy, and like I really means a lot to me that you made time for us today. My How are you? I'm good. I'm hanging. I'm tired, man. I'm always on the go. I don't ever stop. <laughs> I'm always doing something. <laughs> I can tell. I can yeah. tell. <laughs> um, so, this is Vicky, age 20. You're 27, right? 28 now. I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 28. She was born in Bellevue, New Jersey. And has been wrestling professionally for almost three years, right? Three yeah. or four? Yeah, almost four now, yeah. Almost, almost four years. Having wrestled all over the states already. <clears throat> what um championship belts do you currently hold? Currently, I have um, Warriors of Wrestling No Limits Championship belt. I have Invictus Pro Wrestling Women's Championship belt. I have um, ISPW Women's hey. Championship belt. Um, um, IWA championship and IWF in Nutley. So that's how many in total? That's, that's a good solid five. <laughs> yeah. I'm a busy she's a problem. Just just for those that don't know, she's a problem. Okay. <laughs> yes. If you guys if you guys have any questions or comments, write them below. She'll answer them live. Yeah, man. Let's go. I'm ready for it. She's a badass woman. You hear that, guys? Hell yeah. She's definitely, <laughs> she's definitely a BMF. <laughs> I look real cute, but I'll kick your ass real quick, you know? <laughs> exactly. You gotta love her. <laughs> How old were you when you first became a fan? Oh, shit. Oh, down. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I'm so sorry. Um, when I became a fan, I was like, oh my god, like three or four. Uh, I was really young. I always wanted to do this from like a really young age. So, yeah, it started very young. <laughs> it was like one of the first things that I ever like fell in love with was wrestling for sure. Yeah, cliche. How did that happen? Like, was it just on TV one day you came across it? Like, so my did you have family my, that like? Yeah, my sisters are really big into it, and. uh they used to watch it, and I don't know. I just I remember just sitting there watching with them, and I'm like, "Damn!" I'm like, uh, "Okay." I'm like, "This is really cool. I like this." Like a little a little girl, you know. And I'm like, "This is awesome." And it just I just stuck with me. I never never ever wanted to do anything else since. Like literally, like ever. <laughs> like it's crazy. <laughs> um, for the person asking, who's Vicky? The one on the bottom. <laughs> Vicious Vicky. <clears throat> At what age did you tell yourself seriously that you wanted to start training? You know, where did you start training and under who? So 
I actually was, like I said, a very young age. I mean, like, legit, like, preschool through, like, senior year of high school. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Pro wrestler, pro wrestler, pro wrestler. Like, everybody wanted to be singers and dancers and vets and, you know, teachers. And I was like, I want to be a pro wrestler. <laughs> um, and when I was, like, 11 or 12, I went to my first indie show for IWF, Independent Wrestling Federation, which I'm actually now a champion of, which is full circle for me. That was really cool. Um but I went there and I did like youth clinics and stuff. And that's where I met the likes of like a Sean Donovan, Justin Carino, uh, you know, Robbie E, uh, uh, Fred Rosser, uh, all these guys that I, that I grew up with as a kid. Chris Steeler had a full circle moment with Chris Steeler as well, um, winning the No Limits Championship from him. So that was cool. And I went there for like youth clinics and stuff and got my first taste of it, you know, very young. And I loved every second of it. But, um, you know, I just didn't wasn't my time yet. I was also very young. Um, you know, so I, that was my first taste. And then as I got older, um, I was about, this was 2018. I went to wrestle pro, um, creative pro New Jersey and Rahway. Uh, I trained under Pat Buck, uh, Kevin Matthews, Mario Bacara, Danny Moff. Did I say that already? If I did say his name twice, mm -hmm. cause yeah. I, I love me some Danny Moff, uh, <laughs> Sean Donovan yeah. too. Like, you know, so I came from, like, a really good school, and, um, you know, they are, like, top guys in, in wrestling. So, yeah, I mean, that was uh, exciting. So, I uh, and I did so. fast, man, like, fast. It was, like, I was, like, four months in. They're, like, you're going out there. And I'm, like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, okay. <laughs> like, so, yeah. Yep. So, how did, how did your family or your parents feel about you getting into such a, you know, uh, physical sport? Well, my dad didn't like it when I was young, when I was doing like the youth clinics. He's like, "Oh, it's a pipe dream. You'll never make it." And he didn't. I know he didn't say it to hurt me because my parents are awesome. You know, he wasn't. Yeah. Trying, like you know, stop me from living my dreams. He just really thought back then, you know, like he goes, "She's gonna get hurt, or she's not gonna make it, or she's gonna get upset." Or, and I stopped. And it kind of like, I always thought like if I did keep going with it when I was younger, like my life would have turned out a lot differently. But um, you know, given my story, I think I'm. I think I did all right. So uh. But, um, you know, it, w it was just a struggle to get there. Like, I had a lot of life curveballs that uh, I've been through. And, you know, we all go through things. But I'm very big on um, recovering. And I, I don't just mean from a substance. I mean everything. You know, like, there's just so many things that a person can go through and uh, deal with on a daily basis. And, you know, to kind of be in the mood right now. You know, I'm not where I want to be professionally yet. But I have some really big stuff coming up, man. And, uh really big opportunities that I'm really excited about. I just announced MCW, which is really cool to you know, be on that stage and that platform. So it, it, I know it takes time and I'm, Congratulations. I'm yeah, I haven't gotten, so we'll see. I see you going really far. Um, yep. One step at a time, you know, every little step I take Bobby Brown. <laughs> I always throw that in there. What was, what do you, <laughs> what do you feel like um, the most difficult thing was, you know, you had to overcome when you were in training? Um, I would probably say not beating myself up. Um, you know, I was, I just wanted to get it so bad in the beginning and and I did pick it, I, I, you know, my trainers, I've said it too, it's not just coming from me, but I did pick it up very fast. Um, you know, I, I just, I knew I was going to be a natural at it. Like I knew I was going to have a knack for it, you know, but, but I would beat myself up. If I didn't do something right, but I was like two months in I'm like, why am I getting so mad at myself? Like I'm supposed to mess up. I still mess up. We all do, you know, we're like even professionals. That's what happens. But I think beating myself up and, and not giving myself enough credit for, where I was at that point, you know, like I, I would have like my coaches tell me like, you are light years ahead of some people in training right now. Like you should be like happy, you know, you're, you're, you're really doing well. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that those moments and stuff like that when I was feeling kind of down or whatever, but, but I was, I'm very like, I like constructive criticism. Um, you know, I, I can deal with that. I like that. I like, um, what I can to make myself better in any way. So I kind of felt mm -hmm. like, it, it, it's it's it takes a lot for me like i have meltdowns that maybe like once every few years we'll say right but <laughs> like it takes a lot for me <laughs> to, like really really let something like 
ruin me. Like, I can't explain it. You know, like, I get upset and stuff like that. But it's also hard for things to, like, really, like, break me. Like, I'm very strong. And I pride myself on that. You know, like, I, and then, you know, there's, there's even the strongest of people break and cry sometimes and get all worked up and feel lost and whatever. And, you know, I felt like that early in training because I was like, damn, like, can I do this? Can I not do this? Like, I don't know. And I'm just like, you know what? You're strong. You're a warrior, man. You got this. And here we are. So. I respect it. <clears throat> it shows. It definitely, you definitely exude all of which you are describing. Um. I'll take it. <laughs> Do you feel like there's any lack of respect or favoritism that goes on when it comes to like uh, women versus males in the wrestling business? I wouldn't even make it a, a male versus female thing. It's just wrestling. People just are really um, like I met some mostly mostly the people I've met in wrestling have been awesome. And I look forward to going to shows and seeing all my friends and like, you know, but then there's just some people who are just really nasty and very entitled and, um, you know, think who they are, which I don't like that. Um, you know, I've, I've done some cool stuff early in my career and I, I my head never got big, you know? Um, but I think that's comes with the kind of person that a person is, is humility, you know, and being able to be this megastar. And there's a lot that I met who are like megastars who are like really super cool down to earth. And say, that's how you know they're a good person. I hate when things get to people's heads and it makes them like, their egos inflate, you know? Um, yeah. I hate, <laughs> but there's, it, there's, there's, a, this business is weird, man. Like there's some weird shit that goes on and that's sad. <laughs> who's saying this and who's, it's just, Oh God, it's just awful. That's why you guys always have the best stories. <laughs> yeah. I said, <laughs> too old Dave. I would love to be in an AEW ring. Um, uh, I got a good feeling, but we'll see. You know, yeah, I was actually going to ask you that because I always ask uh, the wrestlers, like, if they got the mainstream call, who would they want it to be from? You wanted to, you would want it to be AEW? For a while, um, I always said WWE because um, that's, like, the, the, the creme de la creme, really. But I don't know, man. Um, if they called me WWE, I mean, I'm going. Like, there's no question. Like, I'm going. If Impact, if, if you know, whoever calls me, I'm going. Um, but you know, I would, I think AEW is like kind of where my personality would fit in with that, like loose cannon kind of mentality. I like that where they have creative freedom and they can, it, it, it works. You know, this is old mm -hmm. school wrestling now. This is what this is why you grew up watching pretty much. Like AEW was like, reminds me, it'll never duplicate, but it's ECW, uh, you know, attitude era days where everything was just like a loose, like free for all. And it was just, it was good. You know, so I totally understand. I've gotten a few of those same, you know, answers about AEW. Yeah, it's 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 uh, definitely definitely the place I think I want to go <laughs> at this point. <clears throat> so you started off. Um, <clears throat> did you start it off as Nico's Rico's manager? I did. Yes. Okay. I did. Yep. Uh -huh. For the viewers, Nikos Ricos, uh, he did deep put uh, in WWE NXT like two years back, right? Yeah, he <laughs> did, uh, he was on Monday Night Raw. Um, he tagged with Bobby Wayward um, against the Viking Raiders. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. yeah. You were there that night? I was. I was backstage, yeah. I did. Uh, okay. That night, I, I was in the conga line. <laughs> For, <yeah. laughs> Tell us about I, that. Yeah. I seen you. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. So, we actually had to retake the shoot that was on TV. Like we we came out, uh, we did we don't we did it was on a, I think main event, uh, when they were pre recording, and mm -hmm. uh, I remember walking out there, man, just walking down that ramp, like I was a nobody, which is fine, but like walking down that mm -hmm. ramp and like look, I was like, holy shit, I'm like, like my adrenaline was just so okay. high. Mm -hmm. Looking at all these fans, and I'm like, dude, this is where I want to be. Like, I want to be here. Like, I'm like, holy crap, this is awesome. Um, and then we had to do like a little segment backstage with uh, Eric Rowan with the spider. Um, yeah, yeah, it was really cool, man. You know, and was, all these guys are really cool about it and stuff. So, yeah, that was awesome. 
Oh my god, mm -hmm. I haven't animal crackers in years, dude. <laughs> that was like my thing back in the day. I used to like eat animal crackers all the time. Rate my level of selling. I mean, I'm not going to rate myself, but I think I sell better than a lot of people do on the Indies today, but that's just me. <clears throat> I'm actually, you know, I, I definitely pick and choose who I do these interviews with, and I definitely pick uh, Vicious Vicky because she is definitely a great seller. I think she's an amazing wrestler for the amount of time that she's been wrestling. Thank you. And she has that it factor. I appreciate it. So, <laughs> I definitely hope, you know, all, all the dreams and goals that you have for your career, you know, they, that they come for you because I feel like you deserve them. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So, did you and Nikos ever date? If not, we did. did. You guys? Yes. You did. Okay. I would say you guys were so great at selling it. Like, I felt it. I, know. I felt like you were married for years or something. <laughs> Yeah, no, okay. I mean, it was fun, man. Well, I did uh, at the time, and I mean, you know, at that time when I debuted, I did enjoy working with him. I thought we were very good um, as, like, an on-screen duo. We were really good heels mm -hmm. together. It really worked really well. So that was that was a cool moment, too, you know, to do that. Be a, now, Victor's Vicky Solo, man. Like, I don't need anybody, like, coming to the ring with me. You know what I mean? Like, I do have uh, Titan Championship Wrestling. I had a few bits where um, – I had Becca. She's a younger girl in training. She would come out. I mean, it was so cool because, like, I'm usually a face, but, like, in this moment, like, I was, like, I was, like, I mean, I'm usually a heel. In this moment, I was, like, transitioning to a face. And to have yeah. a girl who's, like, an up-and-comer, like, kind of, like, come out with me and support me. It was, like, really, it was different. You know, it's, like, usually, like, I'm either accompanying someone and trying to cheat to make them win, you know, and it's to have, like, it was <laughs> like a yeah. circle thing to have it, like, reverse. So that was cool. I liked that. Which do you prefer? I like being a bad guy, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'm at the point in my career where um, I'm like a tweener and I'm I'm starting to dive more into being a face because I think I'm just so, and this is why they say like the whole cave Dave thing, but like, I think there isn't, there, that doesn't even exist in today's wrestling anymore. Everything's just so raw and out there now, which I don't mind, um, but I like uh, being me and uh the real me is not a mean person at all, but the real me is everything else you say. And I feel like when I finally was like um, exper experimenting being a baby face, but I was still vicious Vicky. Like I was still rough and tough mm -hmm. and like hard and hard hitting, but like, and would do cool stuff once in a while. But like my, my in-ring style changed a little bit, but like my attitude isn't like a cheater or a liar or a bitch like doing that. Like, I mean, like it's just, it's, it's yeah. a condition for me, but. I, I like it so far, so. And it's genuine. It, it, it comes off really nasty. And I do. There's a question. This goes hand-in-hand mm -hmm. hand with what you just said. Um, I do. There's a few companies that I'm number one top heel, and there's other companies that I am literally the star baby face. It's insane. And I, you know what? I think that's different <laughs> as a wrestler to be able to do both. Hell like, yeah. Oh, I'm cool with that. <laughs> <All right. clears throat> What has been your favorite moment in your wrestling career so far? Honestly, probably my WWE tryout. Um, I had that when I was like eight months into wrestling, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Uh, oh, wow. I wish that was a lot of personal. I wish it was now, but everything happens for a reason, right? So, uh, I was really new. I was so green, man. Um, and it wasn't bad, but like it wasn't mm -hmm. who I am. Like now, I feel like I would have put on right. way so better much. performance and and everything and my nerves probably would have been a little less uh, but just to go there I was an extra in NXT I flew out myself out to full sale when they were taping at the time and um yeah. uh, being backstage at Raw and Smackdowns um and I've done some cool things like and, and early early in this is all pre-COVID you know um and then COVID happened and I have not done anything um like that since so uh you know it just trying to build myself back up and I think starting with you know the likes of an mcw and you know stuff like that and, and tommy fierro um with he ispw's promoter he's 80s wrestling con who's enormous enormous following um really good guy he's got a lot going on very smart man in this business um he knows his stuff and he knows a lot of connections and he's like my big brother now you know and we're very close and uh 
you know, he, he's the one who's been giving me a lot of opportunities and a lot of things have been coming my way that I would never even dreamed of. So that's why I'm trying to just be patient and just let, 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 let it happen, you know? And if, if, if it doesn't, my life's all right. I'm happy. Um, happy with who I am, where I'm at. So I just hope that, yeah. I don't want to kill myself either. Cause I want a normal life. So that's the thing is like, <laughs> I love, I love, I love, so love the, the adrenaline and being on the road. And I double shot a lot. Like I'm the champion of all these companies. So like some shows are running the same night. I got to go from A to B, A to B, A to B. And then sometimes I'm doing something on a Sunday. I'm doing a, a comic signing. I'm doing like, I'm all over the place. And, you know, and, and I love it. I love it. But I want to be normal too. You know, like I want, I want to get married someday and I want to maybe have kids someday. Like I, I want the white picket fence life too. And I've always yeah. wanted that. And I feel like I'm trying now I'm in my, the point of my, like where I'm at in my life where I'm trying to um, have a happy medium of both, you know, and, and it's, it'll work out, you know? So yeah. Definitely will. Yeah. Keep the drive you have. <laughs> What is the main goal you have uh, for your career? Like, um, what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for what I'm remembered for right now in my career. Um, being me and being real and sharing my story so that other people can feel not alone. I think, <clears throat> I think a lot of people, whether it was a younger, younger demographic of, of boys and girls or whether it was older, um, I think it's important that people respond to me not just as a wrestler but as a human and i think that um with today's day and age and 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 with with drug addictions and, and bullying and um abuse domestic violence like I, I i've been doing so much stuff behind the scenes that i don't mind sharing but uh you know i did a i did a um a short documentary for domestic violence that's will be aired soon i did um i'm mm. I'm going to be co co-writing a book with somebody um, about domestic violence and abuse um, and not just, you know, like emotional abuse too. Um, I've done like, like things in like schools. This was like a couple of years ago, maybe like oh, a couple of years ago, I was involved in like Alcoholics Anonymous and I was like doing uh, a lot of like step work and a lot of like going to different places. And I had a few moments where I spoke about like public speaking about like, you know, like uh, sexual assault um, drug addiction. Um, you know, I, I've literally like, li I've literally lived like, and we all go through things and I'm the number one person to never negate what people go through. I'm just speaking for myself that I literally lived through like every realm of life. Um, like I've been through everything. of time. Yeah. And it's just crazy mm -hmm. to think like, to me, I want to be remembered as the overcomer. And I think that being able to tell someone like, Hey, I have a dream, but I feel this way. Or I'm upset. Like, you know, I tell my friends all the time, like I struggle too sometimes, but like I'm my phone, like my phone's always ringing and I love it. Like I'll always be there for people, man, because nobody really was for me back then. And I don't forget that, you know, the people who weren't are not in my life anymore. It's easy to say, you know, um, most of my friends have been by my side through a lot of things, but there was a lot of people who were just like fake and phony. And I smell phony <coughs> a mile away. <laughs> excuse me and I think it's because I've been through so much that like I like I'll meet a person and be like nah I don't trust them like I could just right away like pick it up where I'm like just the way people are psychologically like I like psychoanalyze people because I just know <laughs> it's just crazy but I went on a rant I went on a rant have, but I want to remember for that <laughs> you have empath ways yes yes oh 100% very much so very much so and sometimes that sucks because you feel things that other people feel that you don't even want to feel. And you're like, damn, man, like, you know, if I see somebody all upset and crying, like, I'm going to be like, shit, are they all right? Like, oh, man, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I just. Yeah. Whereas with other people, it wouldn't, t you know, touch them the same. Exactly. Yep. So, yeah. That's what I want to be remembered as. Just being me and, and helping the next person, no matter what it is, man. And that's really, really amazing that you do that stuff. Yeah. I'm a survivor as well, as far as the domestic violence. And I really, really like that you're doing that. I didn't know that. That's dope. That's yeah. really dope. 
I mean, uh, let me know about the book and stuff. I would yeah. love to read it. Once everything's all released and everything, I'll be posting stuff. But yeah, it's a pretty cool life, man. That's why I said I posted something the other day. I was like, my life's pretty cool. Like, you know, I overcame. I could be, I should be dead right now, really. Like, the way I lived my life years ago, whether it was by the hands of another man or whether it was by a needle, like, you know, I, I should just be dead. I, I, I don't even know how I'm here, but man, I love life, you know, I love life, and I love love, and I love giving, and I just love, I'm very, like, anyone who knows me, there's a few people who are, like, popping in here who know me, if you're here, like, shout it out, but, like, yeah. I am, like, a light, and I'll, I'll never change, I'm loud, I'm silly, I'm obnoxious, but I make people laugh, and it's me, it's who I am, you know, I'm just not fake, and um, I think carrying that with me for the rest of my life will get me somewhere far, because it got me this far, you know what I mean, so. You turned it all around. Yeah. Strong woman. That's right. <laughs> yeah. How, how would you describe uh, women's wrestling on the indie scene right now? <laughs> I think personally, uh, women's wrestling on the indies is awesome. I think um, there's so many talented women. A lot of them got picked up too, but so many talented women, man. Like we, we all have different flavors really. And it's cool. Like I, I thought about that the other day. I was like, we all have like a different flavor. Like, the one thing I always was like eh, about because I grew up like loving Lita's. Everybody looks the same, or they have like the tights, like the like the thing, like yeah. the name, you know. Um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, man, there's some really talented girls out there, and uh, it's pretty cool to you know watch some of them get signed or get opportunities. I'm like, they deserve it. They deserve it. They deserve it. I'm like, it's, it's just, it's just, it, there's so many of us that it's like it's hard to pick from. <laughs> right. So, I, I feel like. The indie scene is more diverse than the mainstream scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. <laughs> no question. So, I know you have a match coming up on March 5th at uh, Project Codename Wrestling. Uh, can you tell us about that? Have you uh, went against this person previously? I have, yes. I actually am wrestling her. Uh, I wrestled her about three times, I think. And I'm going to wrestle her next Friday. And then I'm going to wrestle her on March 5th. But you know, she's also a friend, too. You know, pull the curtain back. But uh, also a friend, dear friend in business. I love her. Um, and we, we work well together. So I'm, I'm always excited to work her, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Shout out to Adina. <laughs> what advice would you give other women um, trying to get into the business? Well, I think um, the big thing in this business, and it, it's, it's, it's not always, but it's just sex sells. I hate to say that, but it does. Um, you know, and I think that having a side of you, you don't have to be like this like sex symbol because I'm not. But I feel like, you know, kind of embracing being, uh, unless you're like a China or like, you know, like a Nicole Bash or something. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta, like, you gotta be, yeah. you gotta have some sort of like sex appeal. And I think, um, that's number, that's like one of, one of the biggest things I've learned. Um, uh, also just not feeling like it's a competition, even though it is, because that's when like pettiness happens. And I, I, watched it happen around me where I'm just like oh that was petty you know like not on my end but I'm like that was petty. Like, who cares? Yeah. you know but it's just it's it's just tough being a girl in this business because there's just so many beautiful women who look like everybody else and I'm not it's not a mock at all but most women are like carbon copies they all look the same with the with the and I'm not I'm not because honestly if I had money I'd probably do so much <laughs> but like yeah you know but I get it but it has like the big the big lip injections and then the pearly hollywood white fake teeth and i'm like I, teeth I, i'm all about teeth though like i like nice teeth so like i don't have nice teeth so when i see girls who have like this beautiful white yeah teeth, oh i hate you it looks so good <laughs> but in but in a, in a good way not like yeah. oh yeah no, no i'm just saying like you know it's just it's hard when you're competing with you know women who are like you know, Pamela Anderson, Trish Stratus, like, you know, like, it's tough. <laughs> how do you, how do you handle that? I'm sure you've gone through yeah, some haters. Yeah, and it's, it's, mm -hmm. I don't, like, I, I'm very, like, oh, she's beautiful, and I don't think, I think I'm, I, you know, I, I, 
believe that I'm hot and sexy in my own way. Like, I, that's why I like Lita so much because she was super hot and had a nice body and everything, but she was like cool. Like, she wasn't yeah. like a carbon copy. Like, she was just her. And she still is. She came back. I'm like, dude, she's yeah. so cool, man. Like, I, I loved her. Yeah. <laughs> so I just feel like, you know, seeing that. Um, I'm very big on being yourself and trying not to let what other people are doing influence you. So that's why I kind of just keep doing my own thing. Like, I like the cheetah print. Like, everyone else is wearing it. And I'm like, no, I'm going to wear it because I want to wear it. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm like, let me, like, what do I, like, wrestling is so hard because, like, you do one thing and all of a sudden someone else is doing it. And not saying that you're copying each other, but it's just, right. that's just how wrestling is. Like, you know, someone else could think of it too. And, like, it just, everything that we've learned in the business growing up, like, it just, restart, it's recycling. You're getting recycling, essentially moves gimmicks yeah. you know it just is what it is you know so yeah that's my rant so said, it looks like lita got a face <laughs> maybe no, you're alone <clears throat> you look good um wait there was a question over here for you anthony bennett joined the party what's up buddy could you handle getting the book at moment no what The book? Oh, yeah. We're not really talking about that yet. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Just follow me on social media. <laughs> so, I actually love how brutal you can be in the ring. <laughs> no paddle puff punches. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also heard, you know, it, get, it, it gets you some heat backstage sometimes, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> how do you deal with, you know, the soft bitches that Aren't so uh, I, everybody has mm -hmm. like like I said flavors all the flavors you know of people what they do and whatnot um like I said I yeah. am hard hitting I'm very stiff but safe I've never hurt anybody like I'm I'm very but but to me it's like I was trained it's a fight and and you have to make it look like a fight so I feel like I'm not gonna go in there and go like this and throw a weak punch I'm gonna go in there and be like like you know what I mean like you yeah. gotta like you know these were things that I didn't know right away I didn't learn right away I'm still learning I'm like you know I'm like four years in the business but like. To have like it has to be believable, or it's like because I'll watch matches and I'm like, mm. you know what I mean? Because it's like you you have you're both fighting for that W. Like you're both that's that's mm -hmm. that's the main goal of a wrestling match. You're telling that story of like who's better than who or who's you know the the baby face and the heel. Like you know it's that whole story thing. And I feel like you know even as a baby, I feel like it's the same thing. But as a heel, like I've always been a heel. Like. I'm going to kick your ass, man. Like, I'm going to keep you down. And if, you know, that's why that those cutoffs happen. Because the baby gets up and they get fired up. And then the heel, you know what I'm saying? You got to, you have to make it believable. Because when, and even if it's, <coughs> like, even chops. I mean, everybody loves my chops. <laughs> because I don't do the, the typical, I'm, I'm fucking overhand. And I, because I want that, I want that loud noise. And I want that. Oh, like, you know, like, it's just, like, I love wrestling. It's crazy. Like, it's just everything. Every time I talk about it, like, wrestling is just a weird, crazy, wacky world. And I just, like, <laughs> I'm just learning as I go, man. Like, you know, like, I I really am. It's just, I don't know. But I, I, um. You're moving in the moment. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. For sure. You know? For sure. I love it. Great like, vibe. That's all we could do right now. <laughs> COVID kind of halted a lot of things, but, uh, you know, I'm grateful and I have faith that uh, something something will break for me one day. You know, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not uh, resentful. I'm very, I, I'm all about clapping for your friends, man. Um, you know, I think that coming up in the business with a lot of these people, I actually got emotional when people got opportunities and were on dark and like stuff. And I'm like, damn, man, this freaking awesome like you know like of course like i want to be there too but it's not like a well why is she there and i'm not it's like screw that no, well, I'm, there yeah. in it. I'm like you know my friend you know, like you know it's just like we're all competing for the same spot essentially you know so yeah that's my rant see i can rant forever about this stuff <laughs> i just got one more question and sure. it's that all right can you tell me in words what what does pro wrestling mean to you? In one word? No, no, like oh. your description of what it means to you. So, wrestling, like I said, it's been something I wanted to do my entire life. Literally, very young, three years old, four years old, and uh, 
there was a point in my time or a point of time in my life when I felt like I was getting older and I thought like I was struggling with a lot of things, you know, like addiction and all these different things. And I remember being like, like 20 years old, 19, just going like, like I couldn't even watch wrestling. Um, I literally couldn't even watch it because it made me cry because I felt like I should be there. I, I need to live my dream. I need to do this and wouldn't even watch it. Um, and I say that part because that goes how much it means to me that I was battling with something and I was choosing something over it. But I was so upset when I would watch it. And I would hear the crowd and I would start crying. Like, you know, I was so emotional. And um, and when I finally did start training, I literally remember just going, I'm here. I did it. I made it. And I was okay with that. Like, I made it to training. I made it to my first day of training. And I was like, I finally did this. You know, and I think that it got me through a lot as a kid. Um, it's all I ever wanted to do. And I think now that I'm a survivor and I've recovered from so many different things in life, I think that now's my time. And I don't know when that time is going to come. I don't know when that big break's going to happen. I just have this, that feeling, that intuitive feeling that like it's, 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 it's coming. And I think that, you know, the more that I stay how I am, which is headstrong, um, humble and, you know, just keep, you know, well, it's not me. Well, there's something. I, I always look at it like if I don't get picked for something, I'm doing something wrong. Now, what I have to analyze myself and say, okay, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better? How can I make myself a better wrestler? How can I make my, my gimmick better? What can I change about my gear? What can I change about my look? Like, you know, I always try to think, or my in-ring style. Like, I, I really try to look at myself and not necessarily like, oh, I'm better. When it's like, am I though? Because I think, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm very like, optimistic is the best word I could use for myself is I'm super optimistic about life because I've been through so much. So I think pro wrestling has been a constant in my life, my whole life. And I think that it's going to stay that way. So, yeah. Awesome. What's up? Well, for us, you're already a star. Uh, I wish you the best in all your future endeavors. And um, I appreciate we'll see you. <laughs> I hope so. That's the goal, right? Um, where can we get your merch at? So I have a store on T Public, tpublic dot com. I actually, if people are following me on Instagram, I posted something like three days ago. There's a the I have a link tree in my bio. If you click the link tree, the has everything there. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So yep. Well, I'm gonna let you go, Vicky. Um, okay. thank you again for being here. You're fucking awesome. Oh, and, likewise. Um, I love the shirt, man. Thank you. <laughs> We'll see you doing big things. Everybody, thanks for watching. You already know. Please subscribe to Be Enough Goddess on YouTube. I'll add Vicky's info so you can follow her on social media. Have a good night. We're with you. <laughs>